TV KPM Dede TV KPM Hi everyone, welcome to Success SPM 2022. My name is Chris MJ and pupils, this is where we are going to be focusing on strategies on how you can answer and score the best marks for SPM. Now today, who is our teacher? Let's get to know her. That's right, for today's episode, we are focusing on English literature or kesusasteraan Inggris and I'm here together with Miss Hanin. Hi teacher. Hi Chris. How are you teacher? Fantastic. It's good to have you again here in Didate TV and uh, before we proceed, I also want to welcome uh, Miss Zaimi, Cikgu Zaimi as our sign language interpreter for today's episode. Hi teacher. All right. now. As usual, a classroom will not be complete without classmates, am I right? Correct. So who are our classmates for today on Google Meets? Let's introduce them. Okay, hi, hi everyone. Where are they? Where are they? Ah, there oh, they are. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, teacher. Could you introduce our friends for today? Okay, so these are four girls from SMK Main Convent, Ipoh. Oh, okay. Hi, everyone. Alright, so could we... Let's get to know uh, who, who are our friends for today. So who do we have? So we have... So the first one is yeah. Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi. <laughs> and then we have Saranya. Hi, Saranya. Hello. Okay, and then we have Yap Lingyu. Hi, Lingyu. And last but not least, we have Fong Kayan. Hi, Hi. Kayan. Okay, wow, I, I like that they are in their libraries right now mm -hmm. and very suitable for our subject for today, which is English Literature. Right. Alright, so without further ado, let's head into our lesson for today. What are we going to be learning today, teacher? Okay, so Chris, so and students out there, today we are going to learn about poetry. And the poem is The Little Black Boy. Now, as we know that today we are going to go into SPM Kesusastraan Inggris 2206 that has three sections. The first section is prose which holds the marks 35 marks and then you have section B drama it also has the weightage of 35 marks and last but not least section C poetry that has the weightage of 30 marks. Now all of this is accumulated into 100 marks or 100%. Okay, today we're going to focus on poetry. As students know, we have 10 poems that you need to master. But today, we are focusing on The Little Black Boy by William Blake. So, let's okay. get to it. Okay, so, William Blake, The Little Black Boy. And this is the poem. So, I like to take a bit of time to recite the poem. Right. My mother bore me in the southern wild and I am black but oh my soul is white white is an angel is the English child but I am black as if bereaved of light my mother taught me underneath a tree and sitting down before the heat of day she took me on her lap and kissed me and pointing to the east began to say look on the rising sun there God does lives and gives his light and gives his heat away and flowers and trees and beasts and men receive comfort in morning joy in the noonday and we are put on earth a little space that we may learn to bear the beams of love and these black bodies and the sunburnt face is but a cloud and like a shady grove for when our souls have learned the heat to bear the cloud will vanish we shall hear his voice saying, Come out from the grove, my love and care, and round my golden tent like lambs rejoice. Thus did my mother say and kissed me, and thus I say to little English boy, When I from black and he from white cloud free, 
and round the tent of God like lambs we joy. I'll shade him from the heat till he can bear to lean in joy upon our father's knee and then I'll stand and stroke his silver hair and be like him and he will then love me. So this is the poem that we are going to learn. Now before we go into this, I like to have a little chat with some of the students online. So can anyone tell me what is the physical form of this poem? Teacher, may I? Oh, okay, Sarah, go on. This poem consists of seven stanzas with quatrain lines. Good. So as people, as students can see here, all of this, there are seven stanzas. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And quatrain because in each stanza, there are four lines. Mm. Okay. okay. Now, we are going... Can I also ask, what about... Because this is poetry, Chris. Okay. So we are going to look at the rhyme scheme. So anyone can tell me, what is the rhyme scheme? Teacher, may I? Okay, Saranya. The rhyme scheme of the poem is AB. Okay, correct. So, what is a rhyme scheme? So here, as you can see, the rhyme scheme is looking at the end rhyme. So, okay. my mother bore me in the southern wild. So, wild is A. I'm sorry. Okay, it's okay. So, wild is A, and then you have white is B, because it's a different kind of pattern. Mm. But wild and child has the same rhyme scheme so that's a again ah. and light has the same rhyme scheme as white so b so it's a b a b is interval okay okay all right so now we have learned about the poem we've read the poem now we want to know what is the overview or the synopsis mm. so the poem is about a little black boy who is actually a slave so this comes from a young black slave's point of view he tells the story of where he is from and also shares the teachings that his mother has given him in particular to accepting his identity as a boy with black skin and believing in the equal love of God to all. So he shares his mother's teachings to the white boy who at that particular time, because we're talking about the se late 1700s, mm. in society's eye is a superior being. And at that time, because slavery is rampant, he is the master with the slaves. So this is the overview of the poem. Okay, after that, now let's look at theme. So can anyone tell me, because they have learned this, anyone tell me what is one theme of the poem? Okay, so we have Kayan. Uh, one of the themes from the poem is racial equality. In this poem, Blake talks about teaching in Christianity and God love everyone. Okay, good. Because this, uh, this poem does have a very biblical tone, so mm. it is talking, referring to um, uh, Christianity, but one of the most prominent one is definitely racial equality. So he highlights the concept of equality, despite the fact that at this time, the, the biggest issue is they're facing is slavery. And this is the reason why, because particularly at that time, it was the abolitionist era. I so, see. Yep. So, which means abolitionists, they wanted to free the slaves. Right, right. This was an a effort of the government at that time. Mm. All right. Now, another thing that we can see, which is a very important message, is the concept of divine love. So, the divine love, because the mother is talking about the lesson that God has given, in stanza 3, 4, 5, we cannot skip this. So, this is talking about that, in the point of view of God, all creations are the same, are equal, regardless of the colour of their skin. And last but not least, the purpose of life and the concept of afterlife. So the little black boy talks about how short life is on earth and it is true. There are positive attributes that will help them to be accepted in heaven. Ah, so. All right, so there you go. Uh, so we just looked at the overview and team for the little black boy. But that is not all. Miss Hanin will be sharing more after this, but we'll be taking a short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back only on Success SPM 2022. DDIT TV KPM. TV KPM. 
Hi everyone, welcome to Success SPM 2022 with me Chris MJ as well as Miss Hanin for today's lesson which is Kesusasteraan English or English Literature. Now today we are also focusing on poetry, The Little Black Boy. So without further ado, Miss Hanin, what are we going to be focusing on next? Okay, because we've already focused on the overview, now we are going to focus on the language and literary devices. This is okay. very important in poetry. So, before we go into this, I'd like to also ask our friends online, does any one of you know what types of language or literary devices that you know of? Okay, yeah? Can you help out? Uh, the main ones are metaphor, simile, personification, and hyperbole. Good. There are the four main types, which is metaphor, simile, personification, and hyperbole. Now, we are going to look at in context of the poem. So in the poem, there is a lot of metaphors. Now before we, I'm sure Chris, there are many, many students out there who's thinking, what is metaphor? Okay, mm. I need to revise this back again. So okay. maybe one of the girls can tell me, what is the definition of a metaphor? May I proceed, teacher? Okay, Sanya. A metaphor is a comparison between two unlikely things. Very good, exactly. So it is a comparison between two unlikely things. And we will see this through the examples that we have found in the poem. So the first one is the rising sun. So the rising sun is the sun. But in the poem, it is actually referring to God. And when it's referring to God, is this is because of his positive attributes to provide warmth, to provide comfort, to provide hope and guidance to the little black boy. Same similarities with the sun, the heat mm. that it gives to the people. Right. All right. So the second metaphor is the cloud. Now, cloud here is actually referring to the bodies of the children, especially when it, it becomes as the vessel of the soul. And the fact that clouds has two colors, we have white and Black. Black. So this is actually referring to the skin color of the two children in the poem. And then we have Shady Grove. So Shady Grove refers to the shade. It gives comfort and gives protection. And this refers to the little boy who can give the white to the white boy as because he has gone through a lot of things in his life, seen as a spirit, stronger spiritual being due to be able to withstand the brutality of slave life. Okay. And there's actually two more metaphors. The one is on the golden tent, uh, and this refers to heaven. And then we have on lambs. And lambs is because lamb is white, lamb is pure. When we go to heaven, we are seen in our whole pure and in being, rather than our sinful being. Okay. So the next devices that we have, our literary device is sorry, on simile. Okay, so can any one of my students tell me what is the meaning of simile? May I try to share? Oh, of course. Definition of simile is a comparison between two unrelated things using the word like or as. Correct. So, simile is similar to metaphor. However, it has to have the word as. When mm -hmm. you're comparing things, it has to have two words, either as or like. So in this uh, constant that we have the first example, but I am black as if bereaved of light. So compare, reason, but in the middle, it has the word as. Then we have the second example, and this black body and the sunburned face is by the cloud and like a shady grove. The third and the fourth are similar, and like my golden tent, like lambs rejoice, and round my golden tent, like lambs we joy. Okay, so this is the example of simile that is found in the poem. So we're going to look at, uh, this is something different, imagery. Now, before we go into this, can anyone help me and tell me what are the types of imageries in poetry? Teacher, may I? Okay, yeah. There are five. Uh -huh. Visual, auditory, olfactory, tactile and gustatory. Very good. So there are actually five. So there's visual, auditory, tactile, olfactory, and gustatory. But in this particular poem, there's only three. So visual, auditory, and tactile. So visual, it means that when we read, can the readers see it visually? So here, we can see it because when we read with the um, line, my mother taught me underneath a tree. Automatically, as readers, we can see, we can envision as if the mother is underneath the tree with the little black boy. 
And then, when the mother says pointing to the east, we can see in our mind how that is, uh, she is pointing to the east. So we can also see image, uh, we can visualize the imagery of black bodies and sunburn face. This is why it's visual. Now when it comes to auditory, anything that is concept of hearing or sound. So these are some of the examples. Began to say, we shall hear his voice. Thus did my mother say, and thus I say to little English boy. You can see this uh, very strongly. Why? Because it's to show that the boy was actually speaking in a pedagogical tone, in a teaching tone, when he talks to the white boy. Right? The last one is on tactile. So tactile is on touch. Mm. So okay. the words that actually envision, it allows you to imagine touch. So here, some of the examples are, she took me on her lap and kissed me. Thus did my mother say and kissed me. And then I'll stand and stroke his silver hair. So all of this touch is to show a certain concept and that is the concept of love. All right. So this is on literary devices. Okay, that's another literary devices in concept of um, poetry which is on comparison because this poem is very very strongly rooted on the concept of black versus white there are many evidences to show that so the uh, the point of um, uh, the words the phrase white as an angel and he compares that the English boy is white as an angel but I am black as if bereaved of light we want to know why is there a comparison but then the boy says but wait even though my skin is black I my soul is white Okay, so there's always that comparison and why is this is because we understand in the poem that angels are made of light and goodness. So the little black boy says his skin is black and therefore no light enters him. But also outside his skin might be black, but inside is white. The soul is pure. All right. And this is the lesson that has been taught to him by his mother because the mother wanted him to have his identity and to lead a good life, always lead a positive life, even though there are many challenges awaiting him. Right. And another thing, he is also trying, the comparison between black and white is going to be redundant because at the very end, he's trying to show that in the eyes of God, everyone is equal. It doesn't matter whether you are black or white. And this is emphasize to show that in the higher being, the most divine, that there are no racial discrimination as everyone, all of his creation are equals. Okay, So this is the comparison. There's also tone. Now tone, we talk about in the context of whose voice is it. So can anyone tell me who is actually the voice of the poem? Teacher, can I try? All right, Fong Kayan, go ahead. The speaker of the poem is the little black boy. Yep, so he's from his voice. And we have to know what type of tone does he use. So in this kind of uh, poem, we can see that he used narration because he's telling the story of his life, mm. right? But especially in stanza 3, 4, 5, we can see that he's using the teaching tone because this is what his mother has taught him. So the lesson that his mother has taught him, he's trying to give it back to the white boy and when he's, you talk about lessons you use it in a teaching tone okay but also there is a little bit of in a deep element here which is the concept of childish naivety it's a little black boy talking to a white master so at that time because it's a slave talking to a master he's hoping to be on equal ground he's hoping to have okay i want to be your friend i am actually the same as you but the naivety is because in reality the brutality of slavery life is very different there is a concept of superior versus inferior mm. and this is not seen in the poem this is why it is naive because he in the poem it feels as if the black boy talks about his rights his equality but in reality he's going to face his life as a slave ah mm. okay okay wow so that was for the language and literary devices there seems to be a lot uh, that we we just went through but are students supposed to memorize this or is it more of an understanding it's more of an understanding okay okay so understanding the language and literary devices yeah. well 
uh, I am learning much more about the little black boy, but that's not all. But before we proceed any further, that, can we take a short break, teacher? Is that okay? Definitely. All right. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back only on Success SPM 2022. Dede TV KPM. Dede TV KPM. Hi everyone, you are watching Success SPM 2022 only on Didet TV KPM. Now today, we are focusing on English literature together with Miss Hanin and my four friends from SMK, Convent Ipoh Pera. Hi there, hi everyone. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into our next uh, part of the lesson. What are we focusing on next, teacher? Okay, next one is very important because we are going to go into the SPM. M questioning. Ah, this is okay. what I'm sure many students are waiting for. Yes. So what is it that you need to do? So these are some of the tips and we're going to brainstorm today. Alright. All right. So here, before you go for SPM, these are the things that I would like to remind the students. So before you enter the hall, what is it that you should do? So first of all, because you've already learned all your texts, you must be ready. So when before you enter the hall, you must know your poems. There are 10 poems in the syllabus. Wow. Know the content, know the context. Okay. There is no shortcut. No okay. shortcuts. All, All right. right. And then we are also talking about in each poem, we must know the literary devices. Do not skip this. This is extremely important. So we must pay to attention to this aspect, literary devices, language devices, especially you're looking at the important words and phrases because these are going to be your evidences. And then how do you relate it to the theme? Okay, next we're going to talk about the purpose. You've already listed down all of these evidences that you received. Uh, you have gotten from the poem. Now. You must understand why does the poet use such words? Why does the poet use such devices? So understand the meaning because this is where your marks are going to be. Now once you all have done all of these things behind the scenes, three, four months before SPM, most importantly is revise. Revise. Revise, revise, revise. Remember it three times, okay? <laughs> because it is extremely important for you to be ready before you enter the hall. Okay, so how is the question going to look like? First of all, they're going to give you the text of the poem and then they're going to give you the question. So this is a sample question. So what it's going to be is going to be explore the ways Blake uses words and images in The Little Black Boy to make the poem so moving for you. Now, please, please, my darlings out there, remember that this question has a 15 mark weightage. So 15 marks weightage is heavy. Mm. And this is actually the least. So because in literature, you have 15 marks question and 20 marks question. Oh. Uh, there's a lot of it that you need to write. But you are also limited to only 20 minutes. How are you going to write this? Now, before we go into the next stage, I like to ask our friends online, can anyone tell me what are the key words that we have to focus on this question? Teacher, can I try? Okay, Fong. There are three keywords in the question. All right. First, the way, words and images, and how is the poem so moving for you? Okay, then you have ways, you have words and images, and then you have how the poem is going to be so moving for you. So we're going to address these three things, okay? So before that, okay, fine, you've already looked at the unpackaged question, but what do you need to do? You need to make sense of the question and do not forget when you're entering the hall, you have to identify and highlight the keywords, but bring your highlighter pens, okay? So because you need to find the evidence and then you read back the question, the evidence that you have, you must link it to the AOs. You must identify the relevant evidences according to the assessment objectives and then you plan your essay. Okay, so let's look at how to make sense of the question. So we have the question here. So we've already identified the three things, right Chris? Yep. Now, how are we going to unpackage it more? So when it comes to waste, what exactly do they want? So here they are talking about the ways that the poet used to write the poem. So we can find metaphor, simile, imagery, comparison. So these are the things that you need to expand. And then words and images. This is important because this is going to be the evidences to this. 
So these ah, are the techniques. Okay. So you find the evidences that is related to the ways and then moving for you because here this question particularly wants your opinion and so you must link to the themes and messages that you have learned from the poem what makes what moves you okay so all these three elements must have in the answer okay, okay. so let's have a little bit of fun right now we have the text all right in front of us so let's look can i ask any of our friends online who's waiting for us can anyone tell me what are the examples of metaphors that you can find on this text? So any May I teacher? Okay, Saranya. Okay. Um, the rising sun in stanza three, line one. Okay, so you have one here, right? And then we have cloud and shady grove in stanza four, line four. Three, four. Okay, clouds here, right? And, and shady graph. we have golden tent and lamps in stanza 5, line 4. Alright, so lamps here and you also have the concept of lamps. Alright, so these are the metaphors. Great, fantastic, Saranya. What about, are there any similes? So anyone can help me? Yes, there are four oh. of them, teacher. Okay, where are they, darling? The first one is in stanza 1, line 4, but I am black as if bereaved of light. Okay, so you have here. The second one is in stanza 4, line 3, and this black bodies and this sunburned face is but a cloud and like a shady grove. Okay, so this whole thing, so this is a simile. The next one is in stanza 5, line 4, and around my golden tent like lambs rejoice. All right. The last one is in stanza 6, line 4, and around the tent of God like lambs with joy. Okay, good. So thank you so much. So these are the similes. All right, do we have any imageries? So can I ask anybody online, do we have any visual imageries, ladies? Yes, teacher. Okay, Fong, help me out. First, in stanza 2, line 1, underneath a tree. Okay, here. Second, in stanza 2, line 4, pointing to the east. Okay, pointing to the east. Last, we have in stanza 4, line 3, black bodies and sunburned face. Light bodies, these bodies, and this sunburned face. Okay, so what about auditory imagery? Do we have them? Yes, teacher. Okay, yep, help me out. Begin, begin to say stanza 2, line 4. Okay, begin Which to say. We shall hear his voice, stanza 5, line 2. Okay. Thus did my mother say, stanza 6, line 1. Alright. And thus I say to little English boy, stanza 6, line 2. Okay, so these are the auditories. What about the last imagery on tactile? Anyone can help me? Yes, teacher, there are three tactile imagery in the oh. poem. Alright, Sarah. The first... The first one is in stanza 2, line 3, which is took me and kissed me. Okay, so this is tactile. Next the one. second one is in stanza 6, in first line, which is kissed me. Okay, so it's this is one. another tactile. The last one is in stanza 7, line 3, which is stroke his silver head. Okay, so this is another tactile. So. We can see all of this that we are already doing it all. Okay, now, so from here, we can see already, Chris. Yeah. There's a lot of things there going on there. Okay. okay. So this is actually what students should do. Before they even start writing. Before they even start writing. So this must be done in one minute. One minute? Yes. So wow. that's why you need to revise, my okay. children. So okay. always, always revise because the moment you receive it, say, oh, I know what this is about. Line, underline, underline, highlight, highlight, highlight. Mm. And then, because once you have highlighted this, you must be very fast in choosing which one is the most important one. Right, okay. Uh, where it relates to the question. Okay, so let's look after this. So we're going to just list down again all the metaphors and all the uh, similes and imagery that we have already highlighted this then. Right. So we've already highlighted rising sun. We've highlighted cloud. We highlighted shady growth. So these are 
um, some of the metaphors that you can use in when you are explaining and when you're analyzing your answer. We have the golden tent, we have the lambs. Right, now let's look again at our simile. So we have four similes there. But I am black as if bereaved of light. And this black, and then the second one is, and this black body and sunburnt face is but a cloud and like a shady grove. The third one, and like my golden tent, like lambs rejoice. And the fourth one, and round my golden tent, like lambs rejoice. So these are the examples, evidences that you can use. Mm. And of course, the three imageries. We have visual, you have auditory, you have tactile. So visual, you're talking about uh, the evidence are my mother taught me underneath a tree, pointing to the east, black body sunburn face. We're talking about began to say, we shall hear his voice. Thus did my mother say, and this is talking about auditory, and this auditory is in the pedagogical teaching tone. Then you have tactile. Tactile, you're talking about the imagery of touch. Ta mm. She took me on her lap and kissed me. My mother, uh, thus did my mother say and kissed me. And then I'll stand and stroke his silver hair. We have all these evidences. But remember, you have to relate it to the question. Right. So we are going to use the concept of comparison because it is related to one of the major uh, theme, which is racial equality. So you have the concept of black and white. So these black and whites, you have already mentioned it again. Let's revise it again. We are, what's the point of black and white? It is because to compare the two skin colours. Because on earth, there is a status between slave and master. So the master is white, the slave is black. So we can see as if the goodness is only in the master. And the black slave is, has no goodness at all. Okay, But he is actually saying, but I actually am born pure. So here, the concept of black and white has become faded. There's no verses anymore, especially when you're talking about in the afterlife, when you're going to see, uh, meet God in the eyes of God, there are no racial discrimination. So all of these things you know in your mind, but how are we going to write it down? What are we going to focus on? So, um, and so do not also forget about the tone, because even though these things are not... Uh, uh, very clear, it will help you to support your answer. Mm. Why does he use the concept of love? The concept of love, and you can see from the tactile imagery, uh, when the mother kissed him, and then I will stroke his silver hair. This is actually leading up to childish naivety. Because he feels as if he could have the, the right or the ability to stroke a master's hair. But in reality, Chris, a slave, can they touch a master? No. No. They'll be probably, they're going to get punished. Yeah. So, that naivety is there. So, we want to see whether students are able to connect all these evidences to the themes, but also to the tone. And also, do not forget, what are your views on it? Mm. What do you think about it? Okay? And that is why, at the very uh, it is very important when you're talking about any poem, you must remember the theme and message of, this, of the poem. Because you have the po uh, message of racial equality, you have the message of divine love, and you have the message of life and afterlife. Mm. Now, Chris, I also always get this from a lot of my students in class. But teacher, there's so many themes. Right. Which one should I focus on? Yeah. I so do we, we should we focus on, is it based on the question or do we focus on everything? Yeah. So based on the question, because the question is very general. So okay. it's, it did say, how does the poem moves you? Ah. So which of these three is the one that you like? I see. Or really, really make such a significant impact on you. So if you're just going to focus on racial equality, good. Just focus on that, but then find all the evidence related to racial equality. Talking about the concept of black and white. Mm -hmm. If you're going to talk about divine love, then you're going to focus on the evidences that talks about love. I see. Uh -huh. Or if you want, you know, some students, they're quite scared. So yeah. they're like, teacher, can I use two? Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. But okay. remember, there are only 20 minutes. 20 minutes. And, and what happens when, if we don't have enough evidence, like what happens if a student can only write uh, maybe the theme or even certain points, but they don't emphasize on it or they don't elaborate further? What happens then? Oh, you're not going to get 
a lot of marks. There are going to be a deduction of marks because what we want to see is whether you can relate. This is going straight back to the higher order thinking skills. Okay. You have the evidence, you are able to relate and you can make sense of it. You can give meaning and understanding I to what's said. And, and is there a word limit for, the, for these kind of questions? No. There are no word limits. Okay. That is the reason why um, the thing that the students, we want to see the students is to focus on one kind of um, a theme, one yeah. kind of concept, and then after that, elaborate it well. Okay. But this is the difference. Sometimes some students can give two pages. Wow. But it's maybe it's just, too much. For not just too much, but sometimes they don't give enough maturity of thought. I see. Uh, and we will see later what does it mean by maturity of thought. Some of them will going to, is going to list down everything, but it doesn't explain. Right. And okay. this can take up one page. Wow. But because it doesn't have substance, I therefore you might not be as efficient. Exactly. Okay. Thank you very much, teacher, for sharing that. There you go. So pupils who are sitting for English literature uh, for SPM, do take note of all these tips and tricks even before you start writing, correct? Correct. But right after this, we will be focusing on a sample answer for this question. So don't go anywhere. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back with you only on Success SPM 2022. Didik TV KPM Didik TV KPM Hi everyone, welcome to Success SPM 2022 for English Literature with me Chris MJ as well as Miss Hanin uh, for today's lesson as well as I have four friends on Google Meets. Hi! Okay, so they're all ready for today's lesson. Now, in this segment, we will be focusing on answering a sample SPM question. Is that correct, teacher? Correct. That's all right, exactly over to you. Okay, so we've already done all of the things that we have learned just now. This is what we are going to look at. Okay. And this is important. So let's remind back all the pupils out there. Okay, what is our question again? So our poetry question is, explore the ways Blake uses words and images in the little black boy to make the poem so moving for you. All right? Don't forget, it's only in 20 minutes mm. and there are only 15 marks to it. Okay, so first of all, let's recap. What is it that you should prepare? So we've already talked about the what. What's the question? What are the keywords? So we've already mentioned on the words and images and we have to focus on the what, how does it move you? Then, how is it presented? That's where we got the evidences. Is it the, how is it written? The metaphors, the similes, the imageries, those have to be taken into consideration. And then the evidences, what kind of quotes are there? But now, when you're writing for your essay, you must start to think of the prominent quotations only. Right? Which of these quotations, how am I going to tackle this question? So, for example, if I'm going to tackle this question on racial equality, so I just need to find the quotation, the evidences on racial equality, and how I'm going to link that. How am I going to expand it? Okay. Right. After that, students will always ask, the teacher, how long is it going to be? What am I going to write? So here, do not forget, because this is an essay form, darlings. Introduction, you must write your introduction. And the body of the content of the essay, it could be around two to three paragraphs and a conclusion. Remember, you have a limited time of 20 minutes only. Okay. Right? So, let's go through this. Now, when we are writing, so we do not want what we Malaysians would like to call short sniri. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. we have to focus on the assessment objectives. What exactly right. are markers looking for? So the first one, we are going to look at the AO1, assessment objective one, which is on showing in-depth knowledge of literary text supported by textual evidence. We are looking this in the SPM answer. Okay. Second, to explore the text beyond surface meanings to reflect a deeper awareness of content. And then the third one, analyze and evaluate ways in which language and literary devices are used in the text. And AO4, communicate an informed personal and critical response to literary text. A lot of words. What are you going to remember? First one, AO1, you must have evidence in your evidence. answer. Okay. Right. AO2, the elaboration of the evidence. What is this evidence about? Right. And then the three. AO3 is the technique. 
what kind of craft do you use? Technique is the one that's talking about metaphor, you're talking about simile, you're talking about personification, hyperbole. If you are unable to write that, um, as long as it's clear for you to say, okay, for example, you say it in the sense that um, this word compares uh, one object to another concept. Great, you've already hit your technique. And the last one is point of view. So point of view because we want to know how does the student think? What is their opinion on this piece? Do you like it? What have you learned from it? So this is the A04. We are looking for all four of this in the answer. Okay. Right. First things first, students will be like, how am I going to start teacher? <laughs> Paragraph introduction is already, uh, sometimes it's a writer's block. Okay. So first of all, darlings out there, don't forget three things. First, the title and the poet. Then, what is the poem about? And then you refer to the question. So the question says, how does the poem make it so moving to you? So you must relate it back to you. Okay, so let's have some fun here. We are going to look at the two sample answers from two um, uh, candidates. So here you have pupil one. Okay, the little black boy was written by an English poet called William Blake. The Little Black Boy is a poem from a young black slave's point of view. He tells the story of where he is from and also shares the teachings that his mother has given him, in particular to accepting his identity as a boy with black skin and believing in the equal love of God to all. He shares his mother's teachings to a white boy who, in society's eye, is a superior being and a master to the slave. So this is what Candidate A has written. Okay. So, Candidate B. The poem, The Little Black Boy, written by William Blake, is, a, is a spoken through the voice of the little black slave boy on his mother's lessons of racial equality. This lesson is taught on accepting one's self-identity and faith in God as it is seen through a biblical view where God does not discriminate his love for his creations. This lesson is a response to the inequality of status that slaves get compared to the status of white masters. Blake uses words and literary devices such as metaphors and similes to show vivid imagery on the theme of racial equality and captured my interest and understanding of the poem. Okay, so Chris, just have a little fun here. Yeah. Which one do you think is better? I honestly think both are good. Mm -hmm. um, but better maybe pupil A because pupil it's a? more concise. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> We're looking at concise here, all right. Okay. It's okay because some of these students will yeah. think that way. But we are looking at, this is the breakdown. Ah. Okay, we're not talking about concise, we're looking at compact. Wow, okay. Okay, so it's not about the short of the, the, yeah. the words. We're talking about how much things are you answering back the question. Ah, so okay. here we can see both candidates have stated the title of the poem and of course the poet right. all right and also talk about who is the speaker mm. from a black slave's point of view right now in a as you can see in the purple one he talks about the uh, the, the candidate talks about the overview mm. so this overview is retelling the synopsis okay okay but in the in the question remember explore the ways how blake used words and images in little black boy ah. and then and to show how it moves you so okay. you have to address that in candidate B. Right. Uh, sorry, you have to address that in the introduction and this can be seen in candidate B. Because candidate B has written, Blake uses words and literary devices such as metaphors and similes to show vivid imagery on the theme of racial equality. So can you see yeah. how it links, links and links? And most of all, captured my interest and understanding of the poem. It's just simple. This captured my interest. Mm. Okay, so this is the introduction that we are looking for. Wow, okay. Right, so like I said, so these are the comments. Okay, why student candidate, uh, candidate B is a better introduction compared to candidate A. Right, now, uh, we are going, to, once we have done the introduction, we're going to see how we're going to develop the body of the paragraph. So, Developing a paragraph, this is where we want to see students expand their answer. Okay. So most of all, you must, like in the beginning I have mentioned before, uh, the first minute you have to 
very very fast highlight which one are you going to use and then at the same time choose the prominent points so once you've chosen the prominent points you're going to start drafting mm. so the, your prominent points must be linked to the evidences that is supporting your point so up here this must support right and then once you have the evidences this is where the students must uh, needs to do because this is where a lot of the marks are going to be analyze and explain clearly okay. why is the meaning of the evidences why does the person use this type of evidences all right and most of all this is where a lot of students like is their point of view because they're able to express themselves right all right so tie up the the points and your evidences and what do you think personally about that particular evidence all right so because we want to know what you think of the text okay once we have all of this let's look at some more samples all right all right so, uh, we have the first samples of a one of the themes of the little black boy is on racial equality this message really impacts me so there's a point of view there mm. Blake uses lots of literary devices and imageries to show this theme. He uses metaphors such as cloud and rising sun. He also uses visual imageries such as black bodies and sunburned face. There is also a comparison between black and white with the similes white as an angel and black as if bereaved of light. Okay, so let's look at what is the problem with this answer. Oh, there's a problem with that. There is a problem. Okay. okay. Why is this a problem? Because it's just stating metaphors, similes, these are the examples. Okay. Without explaining what it is about. So this is what we want. We want analysis. The student must analyze one by one. That is the reason why in SPM, we want only the prominent ones. You do not, we know in the poem, there's probably going to be 20 evidences. Mm. You are not able to have the time to answer elaborate all 20 evidences so what you do have the time is to choose the best ones mm. and elaborate on it so what is wrong with, uh, uh, what is good about this paragraph is the candidate has stated the themes they have stated the literary devices but this is the problem just listing down it's like a shopping list okay right. so we do not want that right so because it has no analysis on the literary devices and it's we cannot see the link to the theme it's very weak so there's no connection there okay let's look at b so here it says blake uses multiple literary devices and imageries to vividly portray the differences between the little black boy and the white english boy to highlight on the concept of race first Blake uses the metaphor of clouds, where it signifies the body of the child. Cloud is seen as the vessel to the soul, and clouds changes colors from white to black. In relation to the poem, this represents the two skin tones. The role of the cloud is as a bringer of comfort from the heat, so this is represented to the white cloud, and rain to the people, which is represented to the black cloud. Hence, both colors of the clouds have important positive roles to play. This highlights that it doesn't matter on the color of the cloud, each one plays equal important roles to provide comfort and nourishment to all. Therefore, it has equal status despite its color. Yet people tend to focus on the outside rather than the inside. This can be seen when the little black boy mentioned in the line, when I from black and he from white cloud free. To truly, it's truly when both children will be free from the shackles of skin color and be judged by the goodness of their souls. I feel that this metaphor relates well with the theme of racial equality, where we should judge people by what they do rather than how they look. So this is the answer that we want. Why? Because it talks about theme, highlight on the concept of race, gives the technique, metaphor, and then the evidences. Now, here, be compared to A, where it's just listing down the evidence, okay. the cloud is analysed, ah, explained. I see. What does it mean by that? Okay. So all of these things, as you can see, it has, and then they tie it up with all of the analysis, and then most importantly, the point of view. 
So this, as you can see, is more compact but more deeply analyzed. And this is where you're going to get a lot of marks. Okay? So as you can see here, this is... Um, uh, and another thing that we can see is that in the middle, okay. there is a lot of another point. So here it says metaphor, and okay. then it does a comparison. So it's adding two more, um, two more uh, themes, oh, sorry, two more literary devices there. All right, now, we've already done that. So as you can see, Chris, there's a difference. So we've already done all that. You're going to write all your, all your paragraphs and your essay. Let's look at the final checklist for SPM. Okay. So the first one. Students, are, uh, pupils out there, my beloved, remember, read the question for your SPM. After that, read the text, read the poem carefully. After that, you unpack the keywords and phrases in the question and poem. Then you have to choose the most relevant ones from the evidences that you have unpacked. Then you plan your essay with the, the AOs in mind. After that, do not put minor evidences, irrelevant evidences, put it to the side. Okay. Then write your essay, but most of all, read back your essay. Mm, okay, but Miss, I do have a question. Okay. What happens when we face a writer's block during mm. the exam or uh, during the, the assessment? Okay, so this is why it is important that when you have already uh, highlight the okay. evidences at the beginning of uh, before you, you yeah. answer the question, you already know, oh wait, this is my first evidence that I found. Then this is my second evidence that I found. This is the third evidence that I found. You retract that. Ah. And then it'll help you to sequence. Okay. okay. Th thank you very much, Tijia, for sharing that. Yes. Well, it looks like we have come to the end of today's episode. But before we wrap up, maybe you would like to share a summary or conclusion of what we have just uh, dived into today. Okay. So, today, we have actually learned about, we have revised on the little black boy. We have already looked at the question and how to unpackage the question. We went through the sample answers, which one is a better answer. And then don't forget the tips on how, what to do before SPM and during SPM, especially the final checklist. Ah, there you go. And with that, I'd like to say thank you very much to Miss Hanin for today's very, very insightful lesson. As well as thank you very much to teacher Zaimi as our sign language interpreter for today's episode. Uh, with that, we have come to the end. Thank you so much for watching. Success SPM 2022. We'll see you again only on Diday TV KPM. Bye, everyone.